Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel, and today I'm gonna be doing another horror book recommendations video. And this is a video that I've done a few different times on my channel, so if you're looking for even more horror book recommendations, this is the fourth installment. I'll have the first three linked down below. But yeah, I figured it was perfect time for spooky season. Spooky season's finally here. We're in the month of October. I thought this would be the perfect time to recommend some more horror books. But before we do jump into the books, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that you can try out new designer perfumes for just $17 a month. No surprise. I love that their service is flexible so that you can skip any month with no penalties or you can upgrade and add two or even three different scents per month. It's amazing because with each one of these bottles you get a 30 day supply of perfume and these things are freaking massive. I just really love Scentbird because I personally love trying out different perfumes and getting to try all these different scents that are really expensive otherwise because perfume can be so expensive. I like that you get a 30 day supply because I feel like that gives you enough time to figure out if that scent is like your scent. You know, like you can really try it on in your day-to-day -day life and figure out if it's something you like before making a big purchase on a bottle of perfume. And there are over 600 designer brands to choose from. Not only that, but these vials are eight times bigger than the little standard perfume sample sizes that you can get. So it's just, it's a really good supply of this stuff. I also really do love the design of these bottles because I feel like these bottles are big enough that you get so much perfume, but they're also small enough that they make it easy to travel with or just like pop into your purse when you're on the go. I actually discovered my favorite perfume of all time because of Scentbird and it was actually one that they recommended for me. It wasn't even one that I chose myself. So I think that that's pretty awesome. And this month Scentbird sent me five different samples of perfumes to try. They sent me Burberry, the Brit Sheer. They sent me Versace, Bright Crystal, DKNY, Be Delicious, Confessions of a Rebel, Bitch Please, and Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Which, to be honest, I'm kind of torn between my favorites either being the Dolce & Gabbana. This is one that I've actually gotten from them before and I freaking love the Dolce & Gabbana. So yeah, make sure to click the link down below and use my code GABBYREADS2 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. What a steal. And the exciting news is that Scentbird is now available in Canada too. So yeah, thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the horror books. Okay, so the first recommendation I have is one of my most recent reads because it's Faux by Ian Reed. And this one is very, um, it's what I would call a slow burn horror book. I feel like this one kind of balances between being considered a horror, like kind of like a mystery thriller and like a sci-fi even. It kind of like leans within all of those genres, but I feel like I wanted to put it in this video because I do feel like horror fans specifically would really enjoy this. This is a story about this couple who's like living out on this isolated farm and one day this man shows up, like a stranger shows up and he's like, hey Junior, to the guy, he's like, you've randomly been selected to travel to space and I'm gonna help prepare you to do that over these next couple of months. It's scary and creepy, you know, because you don't know if you can trust this random stranger that shows up on their property. Um, this book is pretty slow. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's a slow burn for sure, but I think the ending of this book is just so bizarre and, like, horrifying, like, what ends up happening in this book, and it definitely does lean into the sci-fi elements, you know, because it's talking about space travel and getting people ready to travel to space, which is just something that I also really love, but at least, like, especially the beginning of this book, it reminded me a lot of, like, the cabin at the end of the world with the way that it's, like, you have this stranger showing up on your property saying something about the world, and you don't know if you can trust them or not, and that's kind of part of the horror of it. This book just gets uh, very chaotic and wild in ways that I was not expecting, and I just think the ending was so freaking good. So I would definitely recommend checking this one out. This is the same author as I'm Thinking of Ending Things, and while I did enjoy both books, I think I enjoyed this one even more. I would also recommend The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. I know, what the heck, one of my book troop books actually made it on a recommendations list. Mind blowing. But yeah, this was our book troop pick for the month of June, but I think this is such a fun horror book. This one just has the best like atmosphere to it that just really gave me like creepy vibes. And I genuinely feel like this would be the perfect book to kind of read at this time of year, like October and like spooky season. Because in this book, we have two different timelines. We have one timeline taking place in 1978 and 
then another timeline taking place in 2019. And in the 1978 chapters, we're following this young girl named Vi and her brother Eric, and they're living with their grandma, and their grandma brings home this young girl named Iris, and she's like, you need to watch out for her. She's gonna be living with us now. And then in the present day chapters in 2019, you're following this woman named Lizzie, who's the host of a really popular podcast called Monsters Among Us, and she's traveling to this city in Vermont where this young girl has recently gone missing. And gosh, I don't know like which chapters I enjoyed more because, you know, I obviously love the present day chapters because it felt very like, you know, a woman traveling to a small town where this girl went missing and there are, there's all these like local myths about this girl who like lives in the water and all this creepy shit, you know, like it's just really atmospheric in those chapters. But then I also loved the chapters of when they were kids and when like their grandma's bringing home this girl Iris and like, you know, those chapters felt very like Stranger Things kind of energy to me because this girl Iris that she brings home is very much like Eleven from Stranger Things in a lot of ways. So there's just so much that I enjoyed about this book. The next horror book I want to recommend is Just Like Mother. This one is one that was a little bit unexpected. I actually just listened to this one on audio and in this one we're following these two girls who are cousins and when they were younger they escaped from this cult and now it's following them years later when they're adults and she hasn't heard from her cousin in a long time but they kind of reconnect as adults and she's back in her life and her cousin Andrea has made kind of like a name for herself working in the fertility industry and she has this like crazy baby fever and she's kind of like annoyed at the fact that her cousin doesn't really seem to want to have children of her own. And this book was just really wild. Um, I think this would probably be even more of a scary book for you if you're somebody who doesn't really want children. I feel like for me personally, as someone who I don't really know if I want to have kids or not, this was absolutely terrifying in a lot of ways. And I feel like even though it was a little bit predictable at times, I just thought the energy in this book was just really creepy like it was very atmospheric it also it also gave me major um servant vibes like that tv show that's like on apple tv um it reminded me a lot of that show servant and it was just really creepy it had a very satisfying and creepy ending as well and it was just a fun time all around the next book i would recommend is a classic because it's the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson this is one that i was nervous to read for years because i had loved the tv show so much and i had so many people telling me that the book is so different and that the book just isn't is good. While I do agree that the book and the TV show are so different, like it's almost completely different stories. They just basically use the same character names, but that's about the only similarities. And I do think the show is superior because the show is like one of my top favorite shows of all time, but I do still think this is an interesting book and I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I was going to, especially for something that was, you know, originally published in 1959. The language wasn't nearly as hard to get into and read as I expected it to be, you know, because I feel like my issue with a lot of classics is the fact that the language is like an adjustment you know it's like so hard to get used to the language that they used back then but honestly like the language in this it felt like it could have been written just a few years ago like I didn't really have an issue with getting into this book and in this story the way it's so different from the tv show is because we're following this doctor named Dr. Montague and he's requesting that all of these people come to Hill House with him overnight to stay there because he wants to record the paranormal activity. Like he wants to have evidence of this house having paranormal activity. And so it's about these, this group of people that's basically like all the siblings in the Haunting of Hill House, like their characters are going to be coming to Hill House to stay with him and staying at this Hill House. And obviously like the premise is so different from the TV show. Like it's absolutely nothing like it, but this book was still really interesting. It was really atmospheric. If you're looking for something with like a really good haunted house vibe, I would definitely recommend this. I thought it was a good time. Another good haunted house vibe one would be White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This one is a young adult horror novel that I actually read last October and I feel like this is like the perfect October read, you know, because we're following this young girl who's a teenager and she's moving to this new neighborhood with her family and the neighborhood itself is just kind of rough and like not in the best area. But then she also starts to feel like there's something in her room with her and like she feels like she's being watched while she's sleeping and there's just a whole lot of spooky atmosphere in this one. One. I think I ended up giving this book four stars instead of five stars because I will admit that the ending 
wasn't my personal fave, but I still think this book is totally worth recommending just for the atmosphere in this book alone. Like the creepy haunted house vibes got me. They really did, they got me and it was so entertaining. Jeez, look at all these tabs, you know? Like I like to put tabs anytime something kind of like freaks me out or I'm like, ooh. Another book that I just have to recommend is Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. And I wanted to mention that I am going to be doing another video this month that's 100% dedicated to horror novellas because, you know, this book is only about 100 pages long and I've been reading so many great horror novellas recently so I do plan to do a video that's just going to be recommending a bunch of horror novellas that I've read over the years. But I did want to mention this book on this list because this was such a great five-star amazing book for me and I feel like it would be a disservice to horror fans if I didn't mention this book. And this story is a really impactful horror novella. It's kind of like, it reminds me a lot of Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. So if you were a fan of that book, I would highly recommend checking this one out because in this book, we're following this woman named Chris and her son has recently passed away who was about like 20-ish years old and he died in this tragic car accident. And now she's standing over the roadside where her son died and she gets a cut on her hand and when her blood touches the ground, that night her son appears, like his ghost appears in her backyard. And this book just gets really freaking intense. Um, if you have any trigger warnings for like self-harm scenes, then I don't know if I would recommend this because this is some of the most brutal, intense self-harm that I've ever read in a book in my life. But at the same time, this book was absolutely stunning. Like the ending actually had me crying. It was so emotional for me. And I feel like this did pack the same emotional punch for me that Pet Cemetery did. So for real, if you enjoyed that one, definitely check out this one. Another one of my uh, recent favorite horror novellas is Petrified Women. This one is a short story that's only like 80 pages. Um, and this one, the only way I know how to describe it is that it's about a couple. They are really into pranking each other. Like they just love to play pranks on each other. And the girlfriend is kind of getting tired of all of his pranks that are just so good. So she decides to prank him back. And then the prank goes very wrong and very badly and things go wrong and happen. And that's all I'll say because it's so short. But oh my gosh, this was just the most disturbing, chaotic short story that I Oh my god, I just love it so much. Another horror book that I would highly recommend is Moon of the Crusted Snow. This one is really interesting. I feel like this one is perfect to read in like the winter time because there's a lot of like snowy kind of ambiance and storms happening in this book. But this is a really interesting kind of like post-apocalyptic where we follow this small community of people who's basically been cut off from the rest of the world. And I think that's what makes this book so scary is because it's another one of those situations where you don't know if you can trust people in this book and that has a lot to do with the horror aspect of it. But the writing in this book, it's it's very much like a slow burn. It almost has like a literary fiction style of writing to it. But by the ending, I was just like, oh my God. Like it was just very um, atmospheric and spooky and creepy and unhinged. And you know, again, I just think this would be the perfect book to read in like the winter time because of the atmosphere. It's a good one. I would also recommend You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. This one is also on the shorter side, but it's like a little over 200 pages. Um, but this one's really interesting because it involves a story within a story. Because in the first story that we're reading, it's about these two boyfriends who, I can't remember if they want to kill each other or if one of them just wants to kill the other boyfriend, but we just kind of follow them and kind of get to see their conversations that they have with each other and it's just kind of like unsettling and disturbing but then we also get the story that the boyfriend is writing called you've lost a lot of blood we get those chapters in between the chapters of the boyfriends and then we also do get some like random like poetry that they've written and like random art and different things like that and this book is just so unique and so odd but I feel like this author you know Eric LaRocca is just insanely good at writing horror and his writing is some of the most like disturbing writing like I don't know what it is about his books but the language that he uses when he's writing these horror novels it just really gets under my skin and some of the imagery he has in his different scenes just really get to me and even if his books don't make a whole lot of sense or if I'm too stupid to understand them I just think he's such a good writer like I will read anything he writes because it's just it's so good I also I also would really recommend checking out the book Pearl by Josh Mallerman. This is one of the few Josh Mallermans that I would say that I really enjoyed. I feel like Josh Mallerman is such a hit or miss author for me, but this one was more on the hit side. I think I gave this one like four out of five stars, but this one was really fascinating because you're basically following this pig who can like manipulate people's minds into 
committing acts of violence. Like there's this pig named Pearl in this book and this pig can like control the people on the farm and like make them commit acts of murder or violence and it's just so fascinating. Like I don't know this book is just very unique in concept and it's like nothing I've ever read before and I was just so disturbed by the by the idea of this pig just in general like what the fuck. I would also highly recommend Follow Me to Ground. This one is also on the shorter side it's just under 200 pages but this one I would also recommend for fans of fantasy if you're into kind of like fantasy or like magical realism type of stories then I think this would be a good place to start for like you know getting into horror books because this book was so disturbing but it also had this like magical realism element to it that I found to be really fascinating if I'm being honest. So interesting too because the characters that we're following in this book we know that they're not human but it's never fully explained like exactly what they are which I think just adds to the interesting element of this book of like what are they? Like they're not exactly human and it's interesting because we're following you know this girl in this book who can heal the people of the town like she's a healer and so that's kind of where the magical realism element comes into play in this book but I don't know I thought this book was so fascinating it was one of the most like atmospheric books that I think that I've ever read like I actually do want to reread this at some point because the writing was just so well done and it was really great it was really unexpected like I did not think this would be something that I would like but it was just so beautifully written that I just really enjoyed this one and then one book that I would still recommend but I wanted you to know in advance that I personally gave this one like a three out of five it's not like a favorite favorite of mine but I wanted to recommend it because it has really great atmosphere is uh The Devil Crept In by Anya Allborn. This is probably my least favorite book that I've read from this author so far so I would definitely recommend reading Anya Allborn's other horror books before reading this one but however I feel like I still need to recommend this one just because the atmosphere in this book is pretty incredible. This one's just really interesting because we follow this young boy named Jude in this town that goes missing in this town of Deer Valley, Oregon and it's kind of like a similar story to something that happened years ago in the town where this other boy named Max went missing four years ago and then he was found dead out in the forest. You know I think the part of this book that was kind of like a downside of it is the fact that we're following from this boy Jude's cousin named Stevie and he's about 10 years old so it can be a little bit annoying to like read from the point of view of a 10 year old if you know what I mean but at the same time it was interesting because you know he's very like afraid of the woods and there's always like sounds that he hears in the woods and so it also kind of made it even more creepy in a way to follow from the perspective of a 10 year old kid but I feel like the first half of this book was really great and just had such great spooky like woods atmosphere and then the second half of this book for me was a little just just kind of like ridiculous and cliche and cringy so like take from that what you will but I do think this is one that I still think it's worth checking out and worth you know worth a read and then the last two that I wanted to recommend were some manga by no one other than Junji Ito because oh my god what a legend. Um, The first one I want to recommend is Uzumaki and this is one of his stories where it follows this town that's cursed by spirals and I know that sounds so weird and like you can't even wrap your mind around it but honestly that's why I think you just need to read it because it's so fascinating like you don't think something like this would be that creepy or scary but it just he writes it in a way that is just so disturbing and I feel like something that Junji Ito does so well is that I love how his chapters almost feel like they're individual short stories but then he starts to connect them all in such an interesting way you know because all of the different chapters in this town follow different people that are living in this town that's being haunted by or like cursed by these spirals and it's so interesting to see how this curse is affecting the different people in the community in different ways but also I swear after you read this book you're gonna start seeing spirals everywhere and you're gonna feel like you're going insane and that just makes it even more fun you know like that just adds to the reason of why this book is so cool and then the last book that I wanted to recommend is is Shiver, which is also by Junji Ito. This was actually the first manga that I ever read, which was so cool. This is actually a collection of short stories. I think it's like eight to nine short stories in this. And there were some of these short stories that worked better for me than others. Like some of them I found to be kind of like cheesy and like a little bit repetitive, but some of them were like some of the most disturbing shit that I think I've ever read in my life. And I still am haunted by some of the imagery in this. Like <laughs> I wanna make it clear that these, um, you know, 
these horror books by Jun by Junji Ito that I'm recommending are so disturbing. Like the imagery is so gruesome and gory and violent and just like bleh. Like it will literally probably make you like, oh God, like why? But they're so good. Like they're so well written. The illustrations are truly disturbing and truly haunting. And he just writes some of my favorite horrors. So like I'm kind of making it my life's goal to read all of his backlist because I just genuinely think that he has something really special going on with his books. Um, and these two have been my favorite so far. Uzumaki and Shiver are definitely some of his best stuff. I still need to read a lot of his backlist, so. All right, those are all of the different horror book recommendations that I have for you today. I'm so excited that I finally got to make another installment of this video series of recommendations. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, I am planning to do another video this month that's going to specifically be dedicated to horror novellas and like the best horror novellas that I've ever read and just do a whole recommendations video just for those because I feel like they deserve their own spotlight outside of just a regular horror recommendations video. So I'm going to be doing that a little bit later this month and then I think next month is going to be the next thriller recommendations video because the thriller recommendations are piling up. Like I've just been reading so many great thrillers lately. So I think I have enough finally to do another video of thriller recs. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of any of these horror books mentioned on this list. Are they also some of your favorites? And also if you have any horror book recommendations for me, then of course, please leave them down below. I am currently, as I'm filming this, I'm working on the first installment of reading your horror book recommendations. Um, so you can expect that video to go up pretty soon, hopefully. I think I have decided that I'm going to be doing two rounds of reading your horror book recommendations this month because that seems to be the preferred video from mostly everyone. So that's going to be happening. So I'm going to be very soon posting videos that are going to be reading your horror, horror recommendations. So hopefully I'll have even more horror recommendations in the future after doing those videos. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.